Minä ajan koko ajan. Minä ajan koko ajan minun auto kadulla. Minä ajan koko ajan. Hello, uh, my name is Adel Abedin. Uh, I'm originally from Baghdad, Iraq, and I live in uh, Helsinki, Finland since uh, 2001. Uh, I really, before saying anything, I would like to apologize for not being with you tonight uh, because at this very moment I'm actually in LA shooting my new video piece. And I hope that this interview of this talk, whatever you want to call it, will go well because it's really weird to be talking to a camera. So bear with me. Kokoyan, minayan, kokoyan, minun auto kadulla, minayan, kokoyan, minayan, kokoyan. Uh, it's called uh, Rakkas Laulu, the piece that you just saw, uh, and actually, it was like the starting point of, of this piece was a, a challenge between me and myself as a like a foreigner immigrant in Finland, which uh, facing this new culture uh, and uh, very complicated, difficult language. Uh, so I uh, try to kind of sum all that in, in, in a piece where it, hopefully it gives a message about how I saw that this new culture back then in 2006 when I did that this piece. Uh, I basically wrote this song on based on the knowledge I know or the vocabularies I know of the Finnish language and uh, it ended up, I think it's a cool song, and it tells a lot about like how Finns are, how I saw them back then, and how they are kind of being like to be alone and all this stuff. I'm sure all of you are aware of that. Of course, like at the beginning, you uh, when 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 we get exposed to a new place, uh, we feel that we are out like not really integrated so much with the new culture or the new place we go to. But I, I won't say minority is that, I would say minority is more of uh, when the other forces you in a, in a, in a place. And, and, and. Uh, symphony is about uh, Iraqi teenagers, emos. Uh, they were stoned to death by religious fanatics because uh, their looks made the fanatics thought they were homosexuals. And uh, that was in Baghdad 2012, very recent, surprising. And uh, when I read this news, actually, it was very shocking to me. And what shocked me more when I learned that the families of those victims, uh, they were afraid to file any case or to make any media fuzz of this uh, because they were just simply afraid of being labeled. Uh, I mean, the identity concept for me always is a, it's like a starting point to, be, to reach different destination and to uh, argue different concepts or maybe deeper concepts. But in a piece I did recently in 2013, uh, sound installation or like like inst like sound based installation, maybe that's the best way to describe it, where I actually uh, made the drawings 22 meters long of a machine uh, develops from really old type into really high tech machine, which I th I was like portraying that this is like kind of how identity is going through over time with the effect of the technology, globalization, internet, you know, all these inputs that we have daily and massive information. How it changes our identity and how how it affects it in a, in a good or in a bad way. I, I'm not arguing that. Uh, and the piece was actually, with the, with the drawings, they were like a sound installation which actually animates the movements of the viewer throughout this in, uh, installation when you are there and it's like randomly played so sometimes you go there there's no production of an identity or there's no development of, of an identity but sometimes you go in the middle of that and sometimes not so it's uh, I always like to leave like my works in a way or to do my works in a way that it leaves an argument and leaves the, the viewer a chance to think of something and, and uh, to get his own conclusion on, on, on the topic that I'm arguing. Uh, in mid 90s and end of 90s and beginning of 2000, uh, Saddam Hussein's regime uh, back then in Baghdad, uh, Iraq, the whole country, uh, they commissioned or they used to commission uh, songs, to, you know, propaganda song for the country. But the 
the results of that it ended up with a very catchy uh, songs which their lyrics basically uh, telling just pure love to the person of Saddam Hussein himself, nothing about the country, which the way it was made was really cool actually and very nice. So we used to play it in weddings, in cars when I was driving my car, we played these songs and we had fun with it, but we never paid attention to the lyrics and what actually written in these uh, songs. It's like absolute manipulation, or media manip manipulation. So. Uh, in 2009, I got a commission to do a work, so I thought like this will be a very interesting to to repeat the same experience that I lived in by by having it produced in a new way and using the cliche of the blondie and the bimbo and uh, giving these ladies who they perform the songs these lyrics uh, without they know they are knowing that what they are singing about and uh, they just thought they were love songs, which I think actually, even the original one, they were really love songs for Saddam Hussein himself. Thank you. 